Hey, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Outdoors, just had a terrific report from the doctor. I had my uh, annual checkup, and apparently everything checks out okay. All right? They, you know, uh, did ask me to take my hat off, you know, I'm sure. And uh, so I thought I would stop off here at St. Peter's Lutheran Church and use their lovely uh they have a lovely there we go saint peter's lutheran church here in litchfield and uh well i'm not getting a good reading on that but that's the nice logo there for the church and uh oh notice they have communion every sunday twice 8 15 10 30 a.m Holy Communion, all are welcome. Praise God, hallelujah. So, um, you can walk with me back to the... I'm going to go to the little prayer garden they have here. And uh, we can have communion. If you have your bread and you have your sip of wine, uh, we'll do communion in a moment. But I thought this morning I would just uh, mention that I watched uh, coverage of... Uh, a Lutheran contingency yesterday, a group of Lutheran pilgrims from Wittenberg, Germany, uh, went to meet with Pope Francis in Rome. And uh, the uh, ever-gentleman uh, Pope Francis uh, welcomed them with open arms, and they had a service. And um, in that service, the Protestants all had... Uh, uh, yellow scarves and the, and the Catholics had blue scarves they tied all the scarves together and they held them up over the whole auditorium they're holding up these tied together yellow and blue scarves to show that they're tying uh, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love the fellowship that we have with Jesus allows us to fellowship together and what they did is they brought a huge book about the size uh, uh, the quarto I don't know what the it's the big book it took two men to carry the book up to the Pope and they said you know uh, 400 years ago uh, Luther nailed the 95 thesis to the door of the wall uh, I mean to the door of the uh, cathedral and, uh, you know, Luther made his departure from Catholicism and um, eventually was the cause, was, was part of the cause for the leadership of the Reformation. And then um, while there were, you know, about five million um, Catholics that left the Catholic Church, in Guadalupe, Mexico, there was a miracle happening simultaneously where there were nine million that were added at the same time in Mexico to the Catholic Church. So, you know, it's kind of fun to have those facts and figures, you know. But, but uh, here they brought a new book, and uh, they called it a thesis. And the thesis they presented to the Pope had to do with reunifying uh, Catholic believers and Lutheran believers. And uh, just a quick story, uh, after answering many questions from the Lutherans, the Pope said, now I have a question for you. Which is greater, Lutherans or Catholics? <laughs> the place erupted into cheers and hand claps. And obviously what was going on was that they were welcoming each other, embracing each other. He said, now let me answer the question that I asked you. And the answer that uh, he gave was this. He said, uh, being together, we're better. So being better has to do with uh, the answer to John 17. When Jesus gives the um, Eucharistic or First Communion or Holy Communion or Lord's Supper discourse in John 13, where he does the foot washing, and then 14, 15, and 16, where he talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit, and in John 17, where he prays for the unity of the church, um, a prayer that's, uh, you know, been in process for two days, or in the Lord's eyes, I mean, in our eyes, 2,000 years. A day of the Lord's 1,000 years, right? So here I am in a St. Peter's Lutheran uh, garden, 
and uh, I'm standing right here by a lovely uh, figure of an angel in the prayer garden. You can see it's just lovely and lots of dedications and uh, it's interesting. I don't see many St. Peter's but I see lots of St. Francis. <laughs> Praise God and that's a good thing, you know. But if you have your bread and your cup ready, why don't we sit down here in the garden and have communion, okay? And uh, as we do, remember that uh, commun the communion table is an open table. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Sometimes we just need to sit down at his table in his garden and just have a look about and just enjoy the, you know, the beauty that surrounds us. Praise God. And uh, the noise of the traffic. <laughs> anyway, but how about that uh, with uh, Bob Dylan getting the, uh, um, uh, getting that uh, uh, word last, uh, yesterday. That's fantastic. The Nobel Peace Prize. Where to go, Bob Dylan? Where to go, poet? Praise God, poet and prophet, right? Hallelujah. Well, look, uh, let's grab the bread, and Lord, we ask you to bless this bread to be your body. We do this to remember you, the body of Christ broken for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you've got your uh, wine, praise God. Lord, we ask you to bless this wine to be your blood. We do this to remember you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Alleluia. Praise God. Well, in the bread uh, this morning, I saw um, I saw uh, a cluster of orchids, and they were just beautiful. And uh, don't you know the Lord Jesus uh, loves His garden too? You know, and He welcomes us to His garden. He has beautiful things to show you, doesn't He, in His garden? And he makes your, his garden the garden of your heart. So when we have the bread, he's growing seeds by his body in our heart and in our life. And then he opens our eyes to see the beauty of the garden that he's planting in our hearts. Amen. And then in the wine, um, I, I uh, heard uh, that same hymn that I heard the other day, uh, For the Beauty of the Earth. For the glory of the skies, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Hallelujah. Do you just praise God? Sometimes you just need to cultivate the garden in your heart, you know, as you take in communion. Praise cultivates and tills the ground, making room for all the glorious seeds of his uh, uh, body, uh, of the bread of life. Uh, to take root in the gardens of your heart and then to water it with the wine of his blood and, and his blood causes eternal things to grow. Amen? It doesn't stop. Praise God. The little piece of bread, it keeps multiplying. The little sip of wine, it becomes more and more vintage. You know, the, it's vin heaven vintage, you know. Hello, Connie. Hello, Amy. Praise God. Hello, Camille. Praise God. Hello, Seema from India. Praise God. And, um, you know, we just give thanks. Um, 
Lord, right now we just give thanks and we pray for each person, Lord, that you would bless the communion that they took today and Lord, that you would show them each one of us, Lord God, what it is that you've planted within us. Open our eyes that we might recognize Jesus. And when we do, Lord, that we would see what it is that you have prepared for us at your table. And in the wine, Lord, that we would listen for your voice, that you would hear the voice of our praise, that, Lord, we would join the uh, heaven's choir, heaven's chorus, and just join the praises in heaven on earth as in heaven. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. For this day that you've made, we ask your blessings upon each one right now, that your anointing, that your presence, that your power would fall in their life, that, Lord, that that food, that, that food of heaven that we've taken in, even even your flesh, Lord, that we that we feed on heaven and we drink in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And as I'm praying, I don't know if you saw it, but I felt it. Uh, acorn fell on me. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. So please feel free to... Uh, hello, Jay. God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Um, please feel free to share your experience this morning, uh, your encounter with the Lord, with the others here in the Communion Fire experience, and uh, um, we'll be putting this on YouTube if you care to share it with others so they can have communion wherever they are. Amen, house to house. This morning, we're at the big Lutheran house, hallelujah, St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Tonight, they're having a silent auction here, I guess like, you know, baskets and cookies and things like that, so... If you're in the area and you like silent auctions, but uh, meanwhile, back through the garden, we head back toward the car. After getting a good report from the doctor, now we have an even better report from Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone wave goodbye to the angel? All right, here we go. Bye, angel. We'll see you later, okay? You, you hang out with everybody who needs you today. Praise God. He sends his angels, Camille said this morning again, that the angels uh, surround us. And uh, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, not every once in a while or when it's convenient for heaven, but we're surrounded by that uh, glorious band of angels and that glorious cloud of witnesses constantly. So heaven's always looking after you. And uh, once a day, uh, we like to share this time with you. Praise God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And, uh, ciao, baby. <laughs> Love you. Bye.